Hi, I want to thank everybody for joining me today on uh, a presentation on how to walk away from uh, hip pain with robotic assisted surgery, something that I'm uh, really passionate about and um, look forward to sharing more of my experience and knowledge with you guys this evening. Just want to share a little bit about myself. Um, I'm actually from the Valley. I grew, I grew up in San Fernando Valley, went to Van Nuys High School. Um, I went to uh, college at UCLA where I studied neuroscience and economics and then uh, moved to the Midwest um, and did my medical school training um, at the Cape Session Reserve University in affiliation with the Cleveland Clinic. So I did a lot of my rotations there and subsequently went on to the University of Chicago uh, for my orthopedic surgery residency. Um, it's there that I first got some exposure and experience with robotic assisted surgery. I was then fortunate enough to do my fellowship at the uh, Hospital for Special Surgery, um, which is uh, the largest orthopedic hospital in the country. About one to 2% of all joint replacement in the country take place at this one um, hospital in Manhattan. So that was a phenomenal experience. I'm really excited to take a lot of the skills and tools that I learned there and bring them to you know, patients in, in Southern California and in the Conejo Valley. So um, I'm now with Southern California Orthopedic Institute um, in alliance with UCLA Health, and uh, I'm seeing patients in the Westlake Thousand Oaks area, uh, Simi Valley office, as well as Porter Ranch. So we're going to dive right in here. So hip arthritis um, is, is also a big issue that we have, not as prevalent as knee osteoarthritis, but still quite debilitating. Patients who develop arthritic change in their hip, they they lose their joint space. They develop bone on bone deformity. They have significant pain, typically in the groin, limited range of motion. They'll say they have difficulties with putting on their shoes or socks. Many of the same treatment modalities for management of hip arthritis, you know, activity modification, um, weight loss, you know, use of a cane or a walker. You know, physical therapy doesn't seem to be as effective for patients, especially those with severe hip arthritis, because they're so limited in their motion. They're not able to necessarily get the range and, and do the exercises as effectively. And so it's not as, as good of a treatment modality for those patients as it may be for some, uh, knee arthritis patients. The reality is there's only one way to cure hip arthritis. Um, uh, the only way to do that is then to replace the hip. Um, I'm going to briefly review how a hip replacement takes place. So this is what an arthritic hip looks like. And on the right of the screen is what a replaced hip subsequently looks like. So this is how hip replacements are performed. The top of the femur or thigh bone involves the femoral head that is removed. We then use a special device like a cheese grater to make a socket into our pelvic bone. And then we place a cup into that. We subsequently place a stem into the thigh bone and then put the whole hip back together. So in, in a very rudimentary form, this is essentially how a hip replacement is performed. So hip replacement patients do very well. I'd say they're some of my happiest patients. The recovery time is a lot shorter than knee replacement patients. And because it's such a successful operation, if you look at registry data, you'll see that younger and younger patients are undergoing this procedure. So that brings me to what's new and approved within hip replacement surgery. And Obviously, robotics and technology have also played a large role in hip replacement, but the biggest thing that's probably changed is the approach. How do we get to the hip? The hip is a relatively deep joint, so it's not a, a superficial structure that we can get to easily, and we've come a long way in terms of the approaches that we use um, for the hip replacements. So a traditional posterior or posterior lateral approach involves making incision over the buttock, you cut through the glute max muscle, which is the biggest muscle in the body. You also cut through all the tendons and stabilizing structures for the hip joint. You subsequently expose the hip, you dislocate the hip, and then you perform the operation. So in the short term, that's significant soft tissue trauma. You've cut through the biggest muscle in your body, you cut through all of the stabilizing tendons, and that translates into a lot more pain and a longer recovery. In the long term, because you've removed these stabilizing structures, you always worry about the hip dislocating or the ball dissociating from the socket. So it always, in patients who have posterior hip replacements, they have precautions. They're not, they're supposed to have pillows between their legs. There's certain positions that they're not supposed to do with their feet. They have to learn how to pick up objects in certain ways to make sure that they don't put the hip in a compromised position to where it may dislocate. 
So when we, when we look at potential complications from hip replacement, we talk about dislocation, which I just mentioned, the ball dissociating from the socket, a leg length discrepancy, meaning one leg may be potentially longer than the other. Obviously, infection is always risk with any surgery as are blood clots. You worry about fracture if there's a potential complication during surgery or a bone that's broken or compromised. The loosening of the components, which would require revision surgery or for future redo operation. All of these things we want to avoid at all costs. So with some of our innovations, at least some of these factors can now be mitigated, including reduced dislocation risk, less risk of having leg length discrepancies and fractures. And if we do have fractures, identifying and treating them in a very immediately during that index operation. So the advantages of direct anterior hip replacement um, are the, the way that you approach the hip joint. So you approach the hip from the front, there's two muscles, you simply stretch them apart and it provides us a window to work through. No tendons are cut or released during this operation. You then remove the capsule. You don't dislocate the hip at all, actually. The, the top of the bone is removed without any dislocation, and you're able to perform the operation. So you're not cutting, you're not detaching, splitting, or lifting, or doing anything to the muscle. So it's a very muscle-sparing approach, and that translates into a lot of benefits to the patients. They have minimal muscle damage because you're just simply stretching muscles out instead of cutting through them. The incision's fairly small, it's about three to four inches. Patients have a much faster recovery. If you look at some good studies out there showing reduced narcotic requirement in anterior hip replacement patients, they have less pain. Most of them are eligible to go home the same or the next day. And there's a lower risk of dislocation because all those stabilizing structures are kept in place. And there's no restrictions for these patients. They don't have to worry about pillows or positioning the leg or anything of that nature. It's a very um, technically demanding operation. It does require special staffing as well as a special table that needs to be used for the surgery, but it also is performed under live x-ray. So you can make adjustments in leg length. If you can make adjustments in the type of position of uh, the implant position and all of that can be done in real time. So the biggest advantage is that patients are able to uh, get up and mobilize much faster. And you're able to kind of see that, that final product in the operating room and make the adjustments necessary. Now, the anterior approach coupled with robotics really makes the hip operation a lot more um, successful and makes it a lot easier for us to ensure that patients have the best possible outcome. This is a video on how the hip replacement is performed with the MAKE-GO system. Here's how it works. It begins with a CAT scan or CT scan of the hip joint. A CT scan is a series of x-rays taken at different angles that can help surgeons see things that they can't typically see with an x-ray alone. The CT scan data is used to generate a 3D virtual model of the patient's unique anatomy. This virtual model is loaded into the MAKO system software and is used to create a personalized preoperative plan. Prior to surgery, the surgeon reviews the plan size and placement of the implant. If necessary, the surgeon modifies the preoperative plan to help control important measures of hip stability. During surgery, the surgeon locates points on the hip in order to register the anatomy in the MAKO system. This process establishes the relationship between the patient's actual anatomy in the operating room and the 3D model that was used during the planning process. This step helps ensure the procedure is executed to plan. Once the anatomy is registered to the 3D model, the surgeon has the flexibility to modify the preoperative plan based on their assessment of the patient's anatomy. Then, the surgeon guides the robotic arm to remove the arthritic bone and cartilage from the hip. A virtual boundary provides tactile resistance to prevent the surgeon from removing more than just the arthritic bone identified in the preoperative plan. And visual cues, shown in green, appear on screen to show how much bone to remove. Collectively, this helps provide more accurate placement of the implant to the surgeon's preoperative plan. MAKO assists the surgeon in performing controlled and accurate preparation of the hip socket. As the surgeon prepares to place the implant into its final position, the robotic arm guides the cup at the desired angle defined in the surgical plan. With the diseased bone gone, a total hip implant is inserted in the joint space. And that's how MAKO Total Hip is transforming joint replacement.
So the advantage of the use of robotics with the anterior approach is it allows precise templating and then subsequent positioning of the components. So it's not just the templating or the uh, the, the plan, it's also the, the ability to execute that intended plan. It's significantly reduced the amount of x-ray that I need to take during surgery, which is a benefit to the patients as well as the staff. I, I approximately use about 10% of what I did before. And early registry data is showing us that the patients who have the robotic assisted placement have lower revision rates or need for redo surgery. So I'd like to share some case examples with you on patients with severe hip arthritis. This gentleman, you can see his right hip is completely arthritic. His left hip actually is pretty good. He worked as a plumber and this was significantly impairing his ability to do his job. So this is what his plan looked like. It showed me that he was about 10, cent, uh, 10 millimeters short on his right side relative to his left. You can see the significant deformity that he's developed on the right side as a result of his arthritis. This is what his plan looked like. I was able to see where his bone was compromised. I was able to then position the component into the appropriate uh, position based off of where his real estate was good and shy away from where his, his, uh, his bone was not going to uh, take the implant well. This is what the MAKO showed me in terms of what his final x-ray would look like. This is the templated final x-ray. And this is what his final x-ray actually looked like. So you can see we were able to accomplish the intended um, uh, surgery uh, based off of what we had uh, templated previously. I, I also had a 21-year-old patient. He had nine hip operations starting at age eight. He came in um, on crutches. He'd seen multiple doctors. He was told that there were no surgical options for him, especially because of his young age. So he um, was a great candidate for a robotic assisted surgery. He was able to ambulate um, unassisted after surgery, and I had to recreate his socket. So a patient like this truly benefited from um, a robotic assisted hip replacement.